help people prevent problems and work to change structures that oppress people. This includes our work with sexual and racial trauma, with work and unemployment, and with economic disparities and poverty. And we do this in the academy, in our offices with clients, and in our communities. Counseling psychology has a strong and broad vision for the future, and I am so very honored to be a part of our field. And thank you all for being a part of this community. So our agenda for the annual meeting, which is dictated by our SCP bylaws, starts with a vote from the current and eligible membership for the approval of minutes from last year's annual meeting. The link to these minutes have been shared via a Qualtrics platform link to all current and eligible members. Please check your email if you're a member and pull up the link if at all possible. During the meeting, eligible members will be voting on three items. First, the 2020 business meeting minutes, that's our, our um, annual meeting from last year, of course, the 2021 treasurer's report and bylaws changes. While the meeting is from three to 4.50 EDT, and that's Eastern Daylight Time, right? Voting will be open for 30 minutes from three to 3.30, except I think we've extended that to 3.45, during which time eligible members present, present at the meeting will cast their vote. We'll close the voting mechanisms at the end of this period to allow for voting results to be announced during our business meeting. We'll start with the approval of minutes from the 2021 annual business meeting which I'm sorry, with the, from the 2020 last year, you know what I mean? The last year's business meeting, which have been sent to all members. Would someone like to make a motion or please could someone make a motion to approve or amend these minutes? So move, this is Brianna. Thank you, Brianna. Are there any issues related to the minutes that anyone would like to discuss? Okay, let's vote. Voting is available to those who have the link. So please class, um, cast your vote through the Qualtrics link. Does that make sense? So just so you know, rather than having long pauses to wait for the voting results to come in via Qualtrics, Celeste Isaka will announce the results of the vote when the software notifies her that it's complete. Per our bylaws, just so you know, for our annual meeting, we need a minimum of 25 votes to qualify as a quorum. Also know that if we were all together in a large ballroom, we'd be doing this you know, by hand. Um, so it's usually a quick process. So thanks for hanging in there with the Qualtrics stuff. It was part of what we had to do to adapt to the virtual conference. Also, please note that the polling software is structured for anonymous voting. This was started a few years ago so that those voting at executive board meetings would not feel intimidated to vote in any particular way, especially those from marginalized communities, including students. So we've used this in the EB votes where our SAS co-chairs are, are voting members and due to the virtual nature of this meeting, that's why we're doing it here. So next on our agenda, is the approval of our treasurer's report, which has been submitted by our treasurer, Dr. Annette Cluck. Annette has provided a summary of the details and you'll see that there's attached um, to the email is our CP or in the agenda, the link in the agenda is our C SCP balance sheet. And first you'll see that due to a very positive and unusual year with our journal, the counseling psychologist, our revenue increased leading to an increase in cash held in our checking account with APA. We do not expect to see this recur in future years due to an overall decline in university subscriptions to print resources. Second, our short-term investment performed very modestly in 2020 and is similarly underperforming this year thus far. Our long-term investment shows a similar pattern, which is why we have a committee examining other investment options. At the same time, we recognize that the current investment situation may be more unstable due to the pandemic, and this is being monitored by our finance committee and our strategic investment committee. Third, 
due to the conference being remote for two years in a row and our remote mid-year meetings, our expenditures were reduced significantly. You will see this on the report, but suffice it to say our 2019 expenditures were $640,000. Our 2020 expenditures were $420,000. So that was a big drop last year. And our 2021 expenditures through April, so um, that's hard to generalize from there, but they were $183,000, about 21,000 more than what we had spent at a similar point last year, reflecting some expenses aligned with the strategic plan to include an offering of CE bearing webinars, the creation and implementation of new and our new and interactive website and membership platform, and moving forward with anti-Black racism work. So thank you, Annette, for your stewardship and for that of the, as the work of the SCP Finance Committee members who carefully attend to budget requests and make recommendations to the Executive Board for approval. So would someone like to make a motion to approve or amend our Treasurer's report? So moved. Thank you. Are there any issues related to the treasurer's report that anyone would like to discuss? Okay, let's vote. Members, please use the link to the polling software in the email you received. Our third and final vote on the agenda is the approval of some bylaws changes. <clears throat> changes for the first time since 2017. We'd really like to thank our SCP secretary, Dr. Heidi Zetzer for accepting our request to review the bylaws. There were three things that the executive board wanted to happen. First was to clean up the bylaws so they reflected current reality. This included practices which had changed over the last five years, but had not been reflected in these bylaws. Second was the move to include students in our SCP voting. As background, we had strongly supported the move to include students in the APA vote, but had never made this movement for SCP elections. So Heidi Zetzer and the special task group members, Jiun Lee, Valine Whitaker, Amy Reynolds, Kim Lawson, and Debbie Nolan, did a terrific job of revising our bylaws to reflect these changes. We wanted our bylaws to be current prior to a more comprehensive review with our consultants. The link to the track changes for the proposed changes is in the Qualtrics platform link. Additionally, and importantly, we wanted to get our bylaws to be accurate as of now so that we could move forward with our consultants to make them even stronger. Also, just FYI, um, bylaws changes need to be voted upon by our SCP membership after approval by our executive board, which has already taken place and the executive board has already approved them. Thank you so much to Debbie Nolan and Celeste Isacco for sending these proposed changes to all of our, all, all of our members rather back in June for review, be 60 days prior to this meeting as is required. So today the vote is to approve them. Would someone be willing to make a motion to approve or amend the SCP bylaws changes? So moved. Thank you. Are there any issues related to the bylaws changes that anyone would like to discuss? Okay, let's vote again. The link to the polling software is in the email that all members received. Um, and we appreciate your adapting to the virtual environment. Thank you all so much for being here today and for being a part of SCP governance through your votes. I'm especially excited that our bylaws have, will be, have been or will be approved to permit students to vote as full members. Thank you all for your patience with these formal processes. And I personally look forward to the continuing revision of the bylaws with a, um, with a mindful and reflective approach to broader issues, continuing broad issues. 
Celeste, are there any voting results that you can report? Um, I can say at this time, we do have a quorum. We have 25 and um, uh, we are still waiting for a lot of them to come in. So I'll, I'll announce it a little bit later, please. Okay, terrific, thank you. Our next agenda item is from our amazing SCP Development Committee, which is exploring ways to raise funds to support and expand the work of our division. This is especially important at this time of declining print journal subscriptions by university libraries, which have been our primary source of income for many years, as I alluded to earlier. Creating opportunities for contributions to our work will allow us to have a sustainable economic future and will allow all of us to be part of creating the future. So thank you to our development committee chair, Dr. Julie Cook for being here today to share their first exciting initiative and to introduce her committee members. As we go through any of these reports, by the way, if folks who are reporting could hit, who are like being thanked or um, are reporting could hit raise your hand in the reaction tabs at the bottom of your screen so that you're put to the front of the Zoom line. Does that make sense? Anyways, it would just be great. And it gives people an opportunity to see who is speaking or who has participated in various initiatives. Also, if committee members could raise their hand. Um, all you do at the bottom of your screen, I think most of you probably know this, but at the bottom of your screen is a reaction button. And if you click on that, then it says, raise your hand. And you can click that and then you have to unraise your hand. So um, Dr. Cook, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much. It's wonderful to be here. And um, I am wondering if I might be able to share my screen. Um, maybe if Debbie is, can work on that. I just wanna encourage everyone to go ahead and if you have your phones with you, you can pull your phone out, open up the camera, and you can scan the QR code that is right there on the Zoom background, and that will take you to a link to make a donation to Division 17. Um, the members of the development committee are uh, myself, Dr. Aisha Woods Zarb Kuzin, Dr. Claudia Pyland, Jisoo Kim, and Katie Califano. Um, okay, it looks like possibly I can share my. Oh, it looks like Aisha, you raised your hand. Just saying hello, acknowledging. Glad that you're here. Um, okay, I'm gonna just see. I'm not sure if my um, sound is enabled, so I'm hoping that it is. We're gonna see if this will work. Julie, um, hi, this is Debbie. I actually um, have the video on the next slide. Oh, great. Then I will um, let you share that. I'll let you go to the next one and share that. To me, Division 17 is community. To me, Division 17 is diversity in action. To me, Division 17 is a place where I can connect with other counseling psychologists who similarly have liberation focus and social justice oriented values. To me, Division 17 is working toward collective wellness. To me, Division 17 is a way to give my daughter a better world. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to the communications team for putting that amazing video together. Um, we are hoping to raise $10,000 in um, 10 weeks. And the idea I'm hoping I can pull this up. Sorry, I can't see here. Here we go. Um, the idea is that we're gonna ask people to take Division 17 to lunch. And so whatever that means to you, where you are in your career development, um, 
we, sorry, I'm just going to get to this part, that uh, we might ask a graduate student to donate um, a cup of coffee, what they might spend on a cup of coffee. So maybe five or $10. Early career folks, you might consider just taking a friend out to lunch. So you might donate 20 to $40. Mid-career, you might be taking some students out to lunch. So that might be a donation amount of $40 to $80. Folks who are um, uh, late career prof professionals, you eat only the best lunches. Um, so consider taking out some colleagues and students to the full meal, a nice dinner that you might treat if we were in Washington, D.C. at APA. So that might be $100 to $120. And then we're hoping to find some Division 17 advocates, folks who are um, really wanting to contribute to change at a grand scale, consider donating the cost of a gala lunch, and that might be $500 to, um, a to $1,000. Um, so we're, we just launched, actually this timeline's a little different, we just launched August 13th and we'll be going through October and we will be sharing lots more information with all of you about this and we're just really excited um, to be doing this great work to support the mission of Division 17. Oh my gosh, thank you, Jolie. Thank you so much, that's super cool. Um, and thank you to you and all of your committee for careful planning for the initial fundraising drive to create a sustainable future for SCP. And you've already given the instructions for how to make a contribution. I, I can say that personally, I've contributed funds that would have gone to taking a group to uh, for a meal in San Diego this year, which is where we would be. And perhaps each of us can think of what works for us, however large or small. It's just being a part of our counseling psychology community. So thank you. As part of my leadership mentorship initiative, I think you all have seen this already. We want to hear from SCP members about their interest in membership, which can cultivate stronger connections with our community. We'd be grateful if everyone can complete the following Qualtrics survey to share their interest and experience. And it's on the, it's on the slides right now. The link to it, it should only take three to five minutes if you have not done this yet. And the leadership mentorship group is um, working in conjunction with Dr. Kim Howard this year, um, who is our VP for education and training. Next on our agenda is the APA Council report um, from our members who represent SCP on the APA Council of Representatives. Drs. Brianna French, Ashley Randall, Curleen DeBlair, and Arpana Edmond. If you could raise your hand so folks can see you on the screen, and um, that way you'll come to the top of the Zoom screen, that would be great. We're excited to hear your report about all the ways you work to bring the voice and lens of counseling psychology to the broader APA community. So did I hear Ashley, you were gonna give the present the report? Bree actually uh, kindly oh. volunteered. Oh, good, thank you, Bree with the help of my esteemed council representatives. So hi everyone, we'll keep it brief, but just to give you an update, your council representatives have been very busy. We voted in last virtual APA for many things to come through. So including voting to approve the standards of accreditation for health service psychology at the master's program. I think this is also in our February meetings. So it's an update from both, both meetings. We voted to approve the following resolutions, uh, APA's resolution on racism, sexual identity change efforts, the resolution on gender identity change efforts and on APA and the psychology of human rights. We also improved uh, three different practice guidelines, those for evidence-based practice in healthcare psychology, the evaluation of dementia and age-related cognitive change, and guidelines for practice with sexual minority persons. So we've been busy approving lots of different policies and procedures. Uh, representatives are also participating bi-weekly in council workgroup meetings. Uh, the council effectiveness workgroup was created and recommended ways to better improve the way that we work and get things done on council. And so there are different work groups that were created out of that, including education and access as one, governance and organization and relations, which are as a part of communication and deliberation as a third, diversity outreach and inclusion, which Ashley and I participate in, and the new vehicles for policymaking, which is what Carlene is uh, participating in. 
We welcomed our new APA Chief Diversity Officer, Dr. Meza Afbar, and received a really beautiful and well-integrated model of equity, diversity, and inclusion to embed those aspects across APA as opposed to within one unit or department. And then of course, our very own counseling psychologist, Jean Carter is APA treasurer and presented a budget in February and we will receive another budget presentation about a for APA next week. Uh, at the February meeting, uh, we learned that APA realigned processes to have a balanced budget and had a surplus of 1.8 million at that time. And again, we'll learn more about the current budget next week. And then finally, more recently, we've been considering ways locally to help enhance communication between our council representatives and uh, SCP leadership. And so we met with the presidential trio and Linda Forrest about ways to better enhance student voices in the um, voting process, particularly as it relates to APA governance and apportionment ballots. And so we're going to do some education around that. So we can really encourage people to get out the vote and help bring SCP representation to council, which is where that happens, so the apportionment ballots. And you can stay tuned in, uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon for a conversation about ways to do that, that we are, we are going to have in the Liberation Lounge. And then finally, a lot of the work happens through caucus meetings on council, which uh, all of us as council reps are participating in, including the Ethnic Minority Caucus and Women's Caucus, which we're all members of. Ashley is a member of the Child and Family Caucus. Carlene is a member of the Public Interest Caucus. And I am rotating off as president of the Women's Caucus. I also recently won uh, election for member at large on the council leadership team. So I will start that in January and roll off council. And we welcome Lisa Ferdinand um, to council. Ashley and I will be leaving and thank you so much for allowing us to serve as your representatives and are excited for what's to come. Anything else, Rep, that I missed? Great, just thank you so much and congratulations again for your new position as member at large on the council leadership team. Uh, for those of you that are interested in kind of learning more about the mysteries, if you will, of council, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of our council reps. We're happy to have a conversation. Um, share how we get through the 200 plus emails that come through uh, right around our meeting times. And then just a quick update um, is that typically council will meet around APA. Um, however, um, due to the ongoing uh, pandemic, we have actually um, shifted that meeting to a hybrid meeting in October. Um, so one of the things to keep in mind is for those of you that have applied for fellow status with either in Division 17 and or any other divisions, those will not be voted on until October. So um, sleep tight and you will hear news from us um, early November. Great, thank you all so much. Does anyone have any questions for our representatives? Okay, well, thanks also for offering for any of us to reach out to you at any point whenever we have questions. Um, I should point out that next year we'll only have three representatives on council. Council runs on a um, calendar year as opposed to STB, which runs on a conference to conference year. So um, we'll only have three representatives on council due to the outcome of the APA apportionment ballot where each of us as APA members gets to distribute 10 votes to those divisions and state psychological associations and that, that we support. And then representation is determined based on the outcome of these votes. So this, um, the meeting that Brianna referred to is being held on Sunday. It's in the Liberation Lounge chaired by Arpana Inman to work on ways to strengthen our votes on this ballot. But since we're all here, we know a couple of easy ways to strengthen our vote. First, please vote all 10 of your allotted votes. There's a really small percentage of APA members who vote at all, and we can strengthen our voice just by voting at all. And second, please consider giving all 10 to SCP. Personally, I didn't realize that um, state associations automatically get one seat, and there may be a little bit of complexity to that. Um, some may get, have have two, but very few ever have more than one seat. So over the years, I sometimes gave votes to my state association and I didn't realize until just within the last couple of weeks that I was actually wasting them because they already had a seat. So SCP was super close to getting our fourth seat renewed, but it didn't happen. So thank you for voting and you are all most welcome at the meeting on Sunday in the Liberation Lounge. So next, I would like to welcome our student affiliates of 17 report. Welcome SAS co-chairs, Rubina Angangwa, 
Alexis Rhymes, and Gloria McGillan. You have had an incredible year and we're really excited to hear about it. Great, thank you, Mary, for welcoming us. Um, hello, everyone, I'm Gloria McGillan, um, one of the outgoing SAS Tri Chairs at the University of Missouri. And I'll be presenting this year's um, SAS report on behalf of the SAS Executive Board. Um, so to start, I, I wanna acknowledge just the incredible work of uh, my colleagues and collabor collaborators in this role, um, Alexis and Robina and our faculty advisor, Dr. Lisa Flores, um, you're each just such impactful leaders and women. Um, and thank you for the, the influence that you have had on SAS and our field this year. Um, so the past academic year was the second in SAS's tenure at Mizzou, and also the, the second in which the students that we represent were navigating training um, during the crisis of COVID-19 and all of the accompanying um, injustices as well as the areas of solidarity and collaboration that the pandemic highlighted. Uh, we were very privileged as a leadership team to navigate this demanding year with um, a Nash for the first time with a national cohort of student leaders who uh, joined returning members of the SAS um, uh, leadership at Mizzou to fill out the SAS executive board. We adopted this experimental um, hybrid national leadership model with sort of a limited cabinet of student leaders at the host institution and then others joining us um, on the SAS executive board from a wider range of um, schools than in the past after more than two years of reflection and discussion with members of the SCP executive board and a, a working group focused on SAS's structure. And we're really glad to share that from the SAS executive board and the working group's perspective, our trial of this model has really um, been a success. We believe that continuing the model in the future will increase both national student engagement in SAS as well as equity um, in how leadership opportunities and other uh, resources are shared among counseling psychology students in the future. So we'll be making a formal recommendation to the SCP executive board in the fall that this model be codified in the division's bylaws. Um, and we'll also hopefully be making a call um, both for a new host institution for the SAS cabinet positions uh, and SAS executive um, board positions available to students at other institutions uh, if this change is approved then later in the fall. So please um, watch out on the division 17 and SAS list serves for those announcements and encourage your students, uh, friends, peers uh, to apply or apply yourself if you're interested in these roles. Um, we want to share a thank you to all of our SAS board members across the country for your hard uh, work this year for students in the division, especially during this year of experimentation. Um, we're proud as a board to have hosted a very rich range of events on topics ranging from um, self-care in the face of institutional oppression to advocating successfully for oneself in training, to have conducted uh, an important needs assessment that will be informing uh, support groups for students of color, queer and trans students, and other students from historically marginalized groups in counseling psychology, um, and also to have continued uh, our work that we spoke about during last year's business meeting to provide emergency relief funds um, to students impacted by financial crises tied to the pandemic, you know, among um, other work that we did this year. So thank you to our collaborators and SCP leadership, especially the presidential cabinet, um, our colleagues on the Early Career Psychologist Committee um, and in the international section for all of your financial um, and other forms of support and generosity for students this year. We're so uh, grateful and really looking forward to continuing those collaborations um, and continuing to expand SAS's impact uh, this coming year. Thank you again. Great. Thank you so much, Gloria, for that report. Does anyone have any questions or comments for our SAS co-chairs? And ask directly or put things in the chat box. So thank you so much, Rabina, Alexis, and Gloria for all you contribute to SCP and to Dr. Flores for your mentoring and guidance and helping to create our next generation of leaders. And for all that our students contribute to SCP. We're excited to see what the new year will bring with more inclusivity with the National Board, and we're looking forward to next year with Kimbriana Taylor and Melinda Troika joining the SAS leaders. So thank you.
Next, I have the honor to officially announce the election results for our new SCP officers. Um, could each of you raise your hands on your screen when I call your name so we can recognize you? First, President-elect, Dr. Siobhan Moore Laban. Next, our Vice President for Professional Practice, Dr. Bedford Palmer II. Our Vice President for Science, Dr. Evelyn Hunter. Our Early Career Professional Chair, Dr. Lisa Delarue. Our Early Career Professional Chair-Elect, Dr. Jax Cheng. And our new, newly elected APA Council Representative, Dr. Lisa Ferdinand. So thank you to you all. And welcome, welcome to each of you as our next generation of leaders. We truly offer our deepest gratitude to all who ran for office and will make and you all will make enormous difference through your leadership in multiple ways. Thank you. Next is our um, report on the newly um, board certified counseling psychologists. For those of you that are not familiar with board certification, Counseling Psychology is one of 15 specialty boards within the American Board of Professional Psychology. I would like to thank the officers of the American Board of Counseling Psychology for keeping our specialty strong and vital in professional psychology through the review and board credentialing process. Thank you to Dr. Susan Crowley, President, Dr. Changming Duan, President-Elect, and Dr. James Lichtenberg, past president. Thank you to other ABCOP board members, Jay Mills, Scott Edwards, Sharon Bowman, Christopher Button, Emily Vocal, Vivian Barnett, Esther Wright, Eric Neumeyer, Delisha Pittman, Kate Morris, and Dom Scalise. Board certification is certainly an individual accomplishment, somewhat parallel to board certification in medical specialties, but it's also a statement of identity and it strengthens our field in the larger psychological community. So congratulations to all those who this year have joined those of us who are board certified in counseling psychology. And if you are here, please raise your hand um, as I say your name so we can congratulate you. Dr. Catherine Beckelli. Dr. Christiane Blanco Oilar, Dr. Laura Dickey, Dr. Martin Hesacker, Dr. Daniel Burton Hess, Dr. Allison Hu, Dr. Grace Korobakel, Dr. Michael Parent, Dr. Devon Patterson, Dr. Tyler Reed Peterson, Dr. Roberto Perez, and Dr. Cody Walls. So congratulations to each of you. And I challenge each of us to become board certified in counseling psychology for our own betterment and for the strengthening of our specialty of counseling psychology within APA and beyond. Our next agenda item was supposed to be the announcement of our newly elected SCP fellows. Uh, which Brianna explained to you uh, what happened with that. So thank you to our SCP Fellows Committee Chair and Chair-Elect, Dr. Elizabeth Holloway and Dr. Sharon Horn, if y'all could raise your hands if you're here, for your dedicated service to SCP to honor those APA members who have shown evidence of unusual and outstanding contributions or performance in the field of counseling psychology. Fellow status requires that a person's work has had a national impact on the field of psychology beyond local, state, or regional level. Those are the criteria. Fellow nominations for this upcoming year are due relatively soon. Now, this is just the nomination, September 2nd, and full applications are due by October 11th. I know many people who are here today who qualify as fellows, and I truly hope you will submit your materials this year. Unfortunately, we can't formally announce our 2021 fellows at this time, 
due to COVID-19, COR meeting has been postponed until October. So we will be able to announce and congratulate them at that time. Okay, next I would like our Vice President for Professional Practice, Dr. Lisa Ferdinand, to announce who was selected for SCP's Best in Practice Address this year. Lisa? Hey. Thanks, Mary. Hi, everyone. Earlier today, Dr. Nikki Coleman gave an inspiring Best in Practice Address entitled Aligning Practice with Purpose, a Social Justice Career. Uh, Dr. Coleman truly embodies integrating SCP values as a practitioner, and she's an inspiration to us all. I encourage you, if you missed the address, to uh, look at the recording when it's available. Thank you, and congratulations, Dr. Coleman. Thank you. Next, I would like our Vice President for Scientific Affairs, Dr. Dorothy Espelage, to announce who was selected for SCP's Best in Science Address this year. Thank you, Mary. Um, it's wonderful to see everyone. Uh, Professor Jesse Owen um, gave a address today for the best in science called Psychotherapy Science, Cultural Dynamics, Common Processes and Training Implications. Again, I encourage you to find the recording. Um, what I took away from his talk was this idea that we need to reconsider the ways in which we're training psychotherapists and the fact that 1% of sessions are viewed and psychotherapists don't improve their skills over time was fascinating. So I encourage you to check that out. Um, I also wanna put a plug in for Evelyn Hunter, who's coming in as VP for science. So when she asked you for nominations for the best in science, Please, please nominate, nominate, nominate. Congratulations, Dr. Owen. Thank you. So congratulations, Dr. Coleman. We're honored to have you as our best in practice speaker this year. And congratulations, Dr. Owens. We are so pleased that you are our best in science speaker this year. Next, we welcome Drs. ji Yoon Lee and Donna Schulteis, our APA Awards and Recognition Committee co-chairs, to announce those whom we are honoring with SCP awards and thank those who have worked as members of the selection committee. ji Yoon and Donna? Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, so the Barbara Kirk, A. Kirk, um, ACO Award for Outstanding Graduate Students Research is given for Outstanding Graduate Students Research in Counseling Psychology. So the piece of research submitted must be in an area that falls under the purview of counseling psychology. The award goes to Kathy Mercier. Hello. My name is Kayla Mercier. I am a fifth year doctoral candidate at Louisiana Tech University. Um, my research interests focus on coping with racism amongst Black Americans. Um, I would like to say I am deeply appreciative and humbled to be the recipient of the Barbara A. Kirk Award. Um, thank you to the selection committee and all whom were involved. Uh, the Donald E. Super Fellowship is given for the support of dissertation research on a topic related to career development. The Donald E. Super Fellowship Award will be based upon, uh, based upon the uh, quality of the dissertation proposal and its uh, potential for advancing our knowledge in the area of career development. The award goes to CAU Liao. Uh, Dorothy, Dorothy Boo's Black Award for Outstanding Contributions in Counseling Health Psychology is given to encourage and reward outstanding research and practice in counseling health psychology. The individual's uh, primary contribution is uh, in research and practice of counseling psychology focused on health-related processes uh, and outcomes. The award goes to Dr. Monica L. Baskin and to Dr. Paul B. Perrin. 
I am deeply humbled to receive this year's Dorothy Booth Black Award for Outstanding Achievement in Counseling Health Psychology. The namesake for this award is recognized as a champion of diversity, stalwart for community service, and a fierce advocate for the enhancement of health and reduction of disease risk. Throughout my career, I have tried to embody these same characteristics. There are many people to thank for supporting my professional career, but today I would like to thank my late father, Calvin Lundy, who through his life showed me the gift of serving others and through his premature death showed me the impact of health disparities and the need for increased diversity in health professions. Thank you also to the Division 17 for this tremendous honor. Uh, oh. There any video? Dr. Uh, Paul B. Perrin. The Fritz and Lean Cooter Early Career Award for Distinguished the Scientific uh, Contributions to Counseling Psychology was established to honor uh, distinguished the scientific contributions by an early career psychologist, ECP, to counseling psychology. Recipients of the award should have an established record of scientific contributions to counseling psychology. The award goes to Dr. Kerry Wilkinsville. Hi everyone. Um, so I'd like to take a moment to just humbly express my sincere gratitude and appreciation for this incredible award. Um, I, I, it's an immense honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, none of this, none of this would be possible um, without the love and support of my family. Um, they are the people that hold me up in all of this. So to my husband, Nadimyal, thank you. Um, to my mom and my grandmother, um, the phenomenal matriarchs of my family. Um, they have been lifting me up and affirming me. Thank you. Um, Despite the distance, all of my family is in to make the part for my husband. And can I tell you, they show up in ways that are just absolutely profound. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, to my tribe, uh, my students, you know, the village that holds me up, thank you. And last but not least, you know, thank you to my nominators, uh, Dr. Sharon Horn. Dr. Ruth Fassinger and Dr. Arpana Inman, um, thank you for believing in me. Uh, thank you to the SCP Awards Committee. And I must say, uh, tremendous, tremendous thank you to Division 17. I think, you know, from my first year of graduate school to now, um, thank you for the support, thank you for the community. And most of all, I must say, thank you for making this division my home. So I really appreciate it, everyone. Thank you. The Early Career Award for Distinguished Professional Contributions to Counseling Psychology was established to honor distinguished professional contributions by an early career psychologist, uh, ECP to Counseling Psychology. Recipients of the award should have an established the record of the practice of and leadership in counseling psychology. The award goes to Dr. Stephanie Budge. Hi everyone, um, my name is Stephanie Budge, she, her, hers. Uh, I'm an associate professor in counseling psychology at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in uh, Wisconsin in the United States. Um, I am recording this video to be able to thank some of the people who are most foundational to the work that I do and um, to let them know that I wouldn't be here um, doing the work without um, their guidance and love and support. Um, and so I thought it would be important to share some of the names of the people who really were most influential. Um, and I have some pictures of, of the people who really um, made a difference uh, in, in my work. Uh, I'd like to thank Dr. Jaden Tai, Dr. Kinton Rossman, Dr. Joe Orvez, Danielle Alexander, 
Dr. Sebastian Barr, Dr. Jake Eliezer, Dr. Morgan Snard, Claire Gervasi, Amanda Stahl, Dr. Sheree Hunter, Dr. Meg Manthos, Dr. Bethany Keller, Yen Wen, Dylan Heiner, Jackson Painter, and Yasmin Chisholm. Um, there are a few other people who were also sometimes uh, involved in the um, lab that I'm gonna be talking about, but I, I mainly had interactions with, with these folks. So I just really wanna thank all the members of the Trans Sexuality Teaching Advocacy and Research Lab, the T-STAR Lab at the University of Louisville for everything that you taught me. Um, you taught me how to be an activist. You taught me how to be a mentor. Um, you taught me how to advocate for and with two-spirit trans and non-binary people. Everything that I learned about doing in this work um, as a psychologist and as a researcher started with you. And I'm forever indebted to you all. I miss you so much. And I'm grateful that many of us are still in touch with the work that we do. And I just feel so lucky that our paths crossed in the ways that they have. And I know that we've all kind of grown in a lot of different ways over the years. Um, but truly, um, the research and clinical work and advocacy that I do wouldn't happen without any of you. Um, so I have a few pictures uh, that I found of all of us, uh, different events, um, really doing the work. Um, and my heart just goes out to all of you. I miss you so much and thank you. The John Holland Award for Outstanding Achievement in Career and Personality Research is given to honor notable research on career and personality topics, including career theory, career testing and assessment, career interventions, occupational classifications, personality theory and assessment, treatment interventions and evaluations, and related topics. The award goes to Dr. Patrick Rottinghouse. The John D. Black Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Practice of Counseling Psychology is given to stimulate and reward outstanding achievement in the practice of counseling psychology. Recipients of the award should have an established record of practice contributions to counseling psychology and be mid-career or above. The award goes to Dr. Marcy Rowland. I am thrilled to be the 2021 John D. Black Award recipient, and I want to express my deepest gratitude to Dr. Mary O'Leary Wiley. Thank you so much for passing along your wisdom of independent practice and your passion for working with rural communities like ours. Thank you so much, Mary. I wouldn't be here without you. The Lifetime Achievement in Mentoring Award acknowledges career contributions to counseling psychology via excellence in mentoring. Recipients of this award must have made long-term contributions to counseling psychology via their mentoring activities of others working in the field of counseling psychology. This award goes to Dr. Kristen M. Perrone. I didn't do a video, but I could do a live thank you really quickly, if that's okay. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm really deeply honored by this award, and it's been my privilege to walk beside my students in their professional journeys. I thank them for nominating me. I want to thank my department chair, Sharon Bowman, for supporting me. And I just wanted to thank all of my colleagues, students, and friends at Ball State and around the world. And last but not least, I sincerely thank the Society for Co of Counseling Psychology for selecting me for this tremendous honor. Thank you. The Social Justice Award in Counseling Psychology is given to encourage and reward social justice that has significant impact on practice, research, and scholarship in counseling psychology. Recipients of this award shall have demonstrated sustained commitment to the specialty, to com community involvement, to recognizing diversity, and to demonstrating evidence of achieving community or organizational change that supports disenfranchised, disempowered, less privileged, or oppressed groups, and has a larger impact on practice, research, and scholarship in the field. The award goes to Dr. Daniela Dominguez. 
Division 17, thank you so much for this award. I am deeply humbled and grateful to be this year's Social Justice Award recipient. I wanna take a few seconds to just thank my ancestors, those who are living and those who have transitioned for, for showing me how to do this important work. I wanna thank the freedom fighters who have provided mentorship and support along the way. Let's keep disrupting, let's keep tearing down this oppressive system and let's strive towards creating a new society where we can all be free. Thank you so much. The Daryl Wing Sue Award for Distinguished Contributions to Multicultural Counseling was established to honor distinguished contributions to multicultural counseling. Recipients of the award should have an established record of scientific or professional contributions to research or practice of multicultural counseling. This award goes to Dr. Helen A. Neville. The Leona Tyler Award, the most prestigious award of the Society of Counseling Psychology is designed to recognize a senior member of the SCP who has made a lifetime of significant and sustained contributions representing unusual breadth and depth to the field of counseling psychology. This award goes to Dr. Rosie Phillips Davis. Colleagues, thank you so much for the Leona Tyler Award. In all my dreams, I never expected to receive it. Of course, when I got the call from Mary O'Leary Wiley, our president, I was just astonished. I went back to look at the nomination awards packet to see why, and there was the letter from my friend Linda Forrest and from my other two colleagues, Melba and Helen, saying why. All I can say is that I am humble to be receiving an award for answering my call to service. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Alexis Rames. I'm one of the SAS Tri Chairs, and I will be um, doing the beginning of the presentation for um, our SAS Awards for dedication to social justice and liberation in counseling psychology. Um, so as it states on the slide, this award recognizes exemplary commitment among graduate students in counseling psychology to advancing social justice and liberation. Um, this year, we have selected six awardees, five individuals, and one duo. Um, and so I will just say a brief sentence about each and then some of our um, awardees submitted a video. And so first we have Millicent Cahoon from University of Louisville. Um, she founded Therapists for Protester Wellness after noticing the mental health needs of activists and organized over 100 healers to respond to these needs from a place of cultural humility. Therapists for Protester Wellness seeks to increase accessibility to mental health resources and amplify the clinical practices of black counselors. Hello, first and foremost, I want to thank the amazing SAS chairman for choosing me to win this amazing award. And I also want to thank my amazing, inspiring supervisor, advisor, and mentor, Dr. Mitchell, for nominating me for this award and always amplifying everything that I do. I hope that we continue to understand how important it is for us to work with community partners when working through mental health. And I also hope that we continue to raise the voices of black and brown people. Thank you so much. Awesome. And next we have Ailey Carrero Pinedo, um, who works directly with underserved and under-resourced communities, particularly Latinx immigrants, with focus on trauma and reducing mental health distress by destigmatizing mental health and empowering uh, communities via integrated care, psychological assessment, and empirical supported treatments. She's a true scientist practitioner who engages in research to better people's lives and apply research within her clinical practice, which can be seen in her dissertation, Latinx Immigrant Health and Wellbeing, Examining Legal Status as a Social Determinant of Health. And I should also mention that she recently graduated, so she's doctor. Thank you. Thank you to the student affiliate to 17 for this honor and to Dr. Rachel Navarro for the nomination. Last Friday, I graduated with my PhD, so receiving the news the day before graduation was very symbolic. Counseling psychology gave me the tools to create the things I wish existed. It modeled how to lift others, rise together, and turn ceilings into floors. 
the fight is far from over. I challenge each of you to do the work without centering yourselves. This is how we can create a future that transcends the legacy of colonialism. Thank you again. Muchas gracias. Okay, and next we have Thomas from University of Maryland who could not be here today, but sent that message there. But before I read that, I'll just say um, a little bit about Thomas. So as president of the Counseling Psychology Department's Diversity Committee, Thomas led a monthly brown bag series where the group interrogated how power and oppression influence our work as aspiring and practicing psychologists. Additionally, Thomas engages in advocacy and direct action with Asian American organizations at the University of Maryland and in Washington, D.C. And the message there is thank you so much to SAS for this award. And I'm sorry I couldn't make it to this event. I'm grateful to my mentors who role modeled genuine compassion and work life balance, as well as the queer and trans people of color, academics, and activists who've come before me. Briefly, my hope for counseling psychology is that we is that as we continue to dismantle white supremacist patriarchal oppression, that we remember to treat those with less power than us with kindness and equity to avoid perpetuating the behaviors of our oppressors who created this system in the first place. Thank you so much, Alexis. I'll be presenting our remaining three awards. Um, next, we're very honored to recognize Gabriel Lockett and um, Jules Sustre from the University of Florida. Um, Gabriel and Jules are advanced graduate uh, student re researchers in the collective healing and empowering uh, voices through research and engagement lab. Together, they have led uh, multiple efforts to conduct research and engage in leadership and activism uh, with uh, QT BIPOC community members. Hello everyone, my name is Gabe. Hey, I'm Jules. And we would like to thank Division 17 for recognizing us for this award. And we'd also like to thank Roberto Abreu and our other mentors along with the communities that we do this work for. Next, um, I'm happy to recognize Garrett Ross. Um, Garrett Ross is a graduate student at the University of Florida. Um, he could not be here today um, because he is taking his qualifying exams. So please join us in um, sending Garrett um, some positive energy and congratulations. Um, uh, Garrett's engagement in social justice through um, Black liberation work incorporates research, consultation, training, facilitation, space making, and advocacy. Um, he shared with us that leading a mixed methods longitudinal research and healing project, implementing a model for critical consciousness of anti-Black racism um, to facilitate Black young adults' abilities to prevent anti-Black racism, provided him a much deeper understanding of how uh, Black feminist informed Black liberation work can look. Um, He's co-created and implemented curricula and anti-oppressive uh, co-facilitation, uh, and many in the division may recognize Garrett from his work with Academics for Black Survival and Wellness. Uh, thank you, Garrett, for all that you do. And again, sending Garrett um, best wishes as he's taking his qualifying exams. Uh, and finally, we're um, glad to recognize Terrell Taylor, uh, a rising fourth year doctoral candidate from the University of North Dakota with this award. Um, Terrell's work embodies principles of social uh, justice and liber liberation across so many domains um, from liberatory based research um, to commitment and service in professional organizations, including Division 17. I'd like to say thank you to the student affiliates of 17 for selecting me as one of this year's recipients for the outstanding dedication to social justice and liberation and counseling psychology awards. I'd also like to send a special thank you to my mentors, Dr. Melanie Wilcox and Dr. Tomaqui Bailey for their work in helping me throughout my educational journey, as well as to my family and friends that support my educational process. Last, I'd like to thank all counseling psychologists who engage in work on behalf of justice involved individuals. Thank you. Wow, what an incredible group of counseling psychologists and counseling psychology students. Congratulations to you all. 
It is in honoring each of you that we are truly honored. Thank you, Jiyun and Donna for your leadership. And thank you so much to our um, SAS co-chairs, Alexis, Rabina, and Gloria for lifting up our students and highlighting their amazing work. It was great to see them on tape and hear their voices. Next, I am happy to welcome the editor of The Counseling Psychologist, Dr. Brian Kim, to announce the 2020 TCP Outstanding Paper Award. Uh, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm very pleased to announce the two uh, TCP Outstanding Paper Awards, uh, one that was uh, lead, lead, whose lead author is a professional, and a second uh, one of, of which uh, the lead author is a student. Um, all of the articles were published in 2020, uh, which was the first uh, former year of my editor uh, term, so I'm very happy to be presenting these awards. Um, I'm very, uh, but before I do that, I'm very grateful to all of the authors who submitted their work and the TCP editorial board who provided their expert feedback on the quality of each of the submissions. Um, as I've always said in other settings, the collective heart of TCP is the members of the editorial board and the journal is very fortunate to have such wise and expert board members. All right, um, I'm very pleased to announce that, that the TCP Outstanding Paper Award goes to the article titled, Toward a Psychological Framework of Radical Healing in Communities of Color. The authors are Brianna French, Joni Lewis, Della Mosley, Hector Adams, Nayeli Chavez Duenas, uh, Grace Chen, and Helen Neville. Uh, this was the lead off article of the January 2020 issue. So here's a brief summary from the article's uh, abstract. Advancing beyond individual level approaches to coping with racial trauma, we introduce a new psychological framework of radical healing for people of color and indigenous individuals in the United States. We begin by providing a context of race and racism in the United States and its consequences for the overall well being of people of color and indigenous individuals. We build on existing frameworks rooted in social justice education and activism and describe a form of healing and transformation that integrates elements of liberation psychology, black psychology, ethno political psychology, and intersectionality theory. Now, despite being published uh, only one year and eight months ago, this article has been downloaded. Okay, now listen to this number over 13,799 times. Okay, now to compare, the next closest number of downloads uh, was an article that was published 14 years ago, which was downloaded less than 7,000. So, so 14 years ago, you know, had all this time for this article, the second article to be downloaded, it reached less than 7,000. In less than two years, this article was downloaded almost 14,000, almost double that amount. Um, also, according to Google Scholar, as of yesterday when I checked, the article has been cited in 93 other publications. This is amazing for an article that was published just uh, less than two years ago. There, therefore, the amount of attention on this article has been really extraordinary. So congratulations, Dr. French and all of the co-authors. Okay, now I'm also very pleased to announce that the TCP Outstanding Student Paper Award goes to the article titled, An Exploration of LGBTQ Plus Community Members' Positive Perceptions of LGBTQ Plus Culture. The authors are Joshua Permenter, Renee Gallagher, and Adam Morgan. This article was published in the October 2020 issue. And here is a brief summary from the article's abstract. Um, although a large body of literature addresses sexual and gender identity development, little research has focused on definitions, conceptualization, and identification with LGBTQ plus culture. 14 LGBTQ uh, plus emerging adults between the ages 20 to 25 years with a diverse array of intersecting identities participated in a semi-structured individual interviews aimed at exploring the construct of LGBTQ plus culture. Five of the 14 participants also participated in focus groups to further explore the conceptualization of LGBTQ plus culture that was identified in the individual interviews. Participants described the LGBTQ plus culture as a culture of survival, acceptance, and inclusion. Most participants reported a sense of pride and importance in identifying with a broader LGBTQ plus culture and believed it was beneficial in their identity development. A multidimensional conceptualization of LGBTQ plus identity development was proposed to understand the multiple 
levels of identifying as a marginalized sexual and or gender diverse individual. Uh, this article has performed uh, well since its publication. Uh, despite being published less than a year ago, the article has been downloaded uh, nearly 2000 times. So congratulations, uh, Mr. Permenter and the co-authors. Thank you so much, Brian. What powerful papers our colleagues have gifted us with. Um, the ones that will have an impact on psychology and beyond. So thank you to all the authors. We are honored to honor each of you for your scholarships. Next, I'd like to introduce Dr. Sally Heggie as editor of the Journal of Prevention and Health Promotion to um, announce the best paper of 2020. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm really pleased to be here in our inaugural year of the new Journal of Prevention and Health Promotion. Our first recipient of the outstanding or best paper of 2020 is Dr. John Romano for his paper on the politics of prevention reflections from the COVID pandemic. In this paper, they, uh, Dr. Romano emphasized the importance of adapting prevention applications to individuals and community cultural groups and the need to strengthen prevention training and graduate education. I wanna congratulate Dr. Romano and this article, although it's been out only about a year in a brand new journal, has over 6,000 downloads. Congratulations, Dr. Romano. Thank you so much, Dr. Heggie, and congratulations to Dr. Romano. Now we have um, a long list, an amazingly long list. Um, we'd like to honor our Division 17 colleagues who have received awards at the APA level. And they are on the screen, but drum roll please. Um, and keep the comments in the chat box coming. We would like to recognize Dr. Rosie Phillips Davis, who has been awarded the 2021 APA Committee on Socioeconomic Status Distinguished Leadership Award. Kaiwan Kim, who has been awarded the 2021 APA Committee on Socioeconomic Status Student Leader Award. Dr. Mindy Thomas, who has been awarded the 2021 APA Committee on Socioeconomic Status ECP Award. The Coalition for Psychology in the Schools and Education has been awarded the APA Advocacy Award. And Dr. Kim Howard is a member of the coalition. Dr. Kathy Bischke, who has been awarded the 2021 Distinguished Career Contributions to Education and Training in Psychology Award, and Dr. Linda Forrest, who is the recipient of the Raymond D. Fowler Award for Outstanding Contributions to the American Psychological Association. So congratulations to each of you. You've given so much to counseling psychology, each of you has, and you have broadened we have brought, you have broadened our vision and contributed so much to all of us at the APA level. You've taken psychology and given it away and we so appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next, we have our memorial section of our meeting. As the years go on, we see many of our elders and counseling psychology colleagues pass away. Today, we have three tributes to honor great counseling psychologists whom we have lost this year. Their tributes will go on to the SCP website under SCP Connect following our meetings. Dr. Yu Wei Wang will share a tribute about Dr. Helen Rolke. Thank you, Mary. Um, uh, Lisa Forrest is uh, traveling on the road uh, with the family, uh, so I'm here to uh, give uh, Helen uh, our tribute uh, on her behalf. Dr. Helen Jane Rokey was born on September 1st, 1931 in Chicago. She was raised in a household with two working parents. She was the older of two children and the first one in her family to attend college. Helen and her husband, Art, have three children and three grandchildren. Helen was the fourth woman to receive her PhD in counseling psychology from University of Missouri. Uh, 
Helen often spoke about the climate for women who, when she was entering the profession and how little support and encouragement women received at that time. Helen spent her entire career at the University of Missouri and is widely recognized for her contributions in psychology training. She was a member of Division 17 Board of Directors while serving on APA Council of Representatives. And she was on the board during the planning and restructuring of Division 17. Helen was a founder. She became one of the founding members of the Association of Counseling Center Training Agencies, or ACTA. Known as the mother of ACTA, Helen served as ACTA's second president for seven years and continued to serve in various roles until she retired. In 1999, ATA established an annual award in her name to honor members who exemplify the spirit of ATA. Through those work has shown unwavering enthusiasm, commitment, support, and service to the organization and our profession. That is Helen's spirit. Helen was recognized as a, a fellow of three APA divisions. Division 17, 29, and 44. She was one of the first recipients of the John D. Black Award for Outstanding Contributions to Professional Practice, the highest practice award for uh, Division 17. Personally and professionally, Helen took many of us under her wing, particularly women, people of color, gay lesbian students, international students, and junior faculty and students and practitioners. She mentored generations of counseling psychologists and students. Later today, please join us for the memorial in the Liberation Lounge from 6 to 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Together, let us mourn the loss of a giant in our field and celebrate Helen's life. Thank you. Thank you, Yue, for honoring Dr. Rolke. I'd request a moment of silence in her honor. Next, I would like to share a tribute to Dr. Sunny Sundahl Hansen, written by Dr. Shannon McLean. Dr. Sunny Hansen died on December 21st, 2020 at the age of 92. Dr. Hansen was an APA fellow and past president of both the American Counseling Association and the National Career Development Association and Professor Emeritus at the University of Minnesota's Counselor Education Program. Dr. Hansen is best known for her significant contributions to counseling and career development. Her integrative life planning model was groundbreaking for its holistic approach, emphasizing the integration of mind, body, and spirit. She was ahead of her time. She was a leader in the areas of multicultural psychology, especially multicultural career counseling and social justice advocacy. She examined girls' and women's career development and gender issues at a time when few scholars were producing work in this area and few women held university faculty positions. Dr. Hansen retired from her faculty role in 1999 and continued to lecture widely. She was known as a woman of courage, wisdom, and an amazingly optimistic spirit. She was passionate about diversity before it was a norm in our field. We are fortunate to have Dr. Hansen as part of counseling psychology. She is survived by her husband and two children. Could I request a moment of silence for Dr. Hansen? And finally, I would personally like to share a tribute to Dr. Aldrich Patterson. The world has lost an amazing counseling psychologist who was also my dear friend and a friend to many. Dr. Aldrich Mancio Patterson Jr. died on January 15th, 2021 at age 66 years of age. Dr. Patterson studied at the University of California, Irvine as an undergraduate, where he was mentored by Dr. Joseph White, 
was a re resident assistant and trained with Thomas and William Parham and others who also went on to become counseling psychologists. Aldridge, or Pat as he was known, received his PhD in counseling psychology from the University of Maryland College Park, where he also did his clinical training and internship at the Counseling Center and was mentored by Drs. Bruce Fretz, William Sedlicek, and Tom Magoon. Pat retired after 31 years of service to California State University, Chico, where he and his wife, Chela Mendoza Patterson, moved upon completing their graduate studies from the University of Maryland. He was a practitioner extraordinaire, helping countless students seeking guidance at the Chico State Counseling Center. Fondly referred to as Dr. P, Pat was known to eat lunch on a particular outside bench where students, particularly students of color, often sought him out for conversations and advice. He helped to start Men of Honor, a student organization for black men and other men of color on Chico's campus, and wrote the Men of Honor code that urged these young men to be the best they could be, to know that we are here today because we stand on the shoulders of the people before us. For most of his career, Pat was one of two licensed black psychologists in Northern California, and he maintained a private practice for over 35 years. Pat was a life member of the Association of Black Psychologists. The organization has endowed a scholarship in Pat's name, known as the Dr. Aldridge M. Patterson Jr. Endowed Scholarship. Pat will be missed by all of us who knew and loved him. He is survived by Chela, his wife of 43 years, and their children, Elisa and Alex, as well as his extended family and many friends. Could I request a moment of silence for Dr. Patterson? Thank you all for being part of honoring these counseling psychologists. We all stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. Next on our agenda is my summary of the year in review. What an amazing and yet challenging year it's been. As you know, my theme this year has been, it takes a village. Engaging with solidarity in practice, anti-Black racism, leadership, advocacy, and big ideas. Reimagining our village and creating a collaborative SCP community. I suspect we've all seen that 20 to 20, 2020 to 2021 has been a wild journey. There have been lots of twists and turns, some expected, but many none could have expected. This year, we've all been trying to meet the needs of our clients, students, families, and communities, keep up with the changing world, and making sure we're taking care of our own well-being and those whom we love. It's been a challenging year, but filled with many blessings and new awakenings. I so appreciate each of you for all you've contributed to our field, as well as your willingness to step into leadership. I appreciate your lenses and the passions that you bring to our work. I would like to thank the, the presidential initiatives um, for our five pillars, the presidential initiatives who have provided so much to our members this year. First, engaging practice. Thank you to Dr. Lisa Ferdinand, Dr. Christopher Stoltz, and Dr. Batsare Bunzawabaya. You have done amazing work this year and engaged approximately 2,600 psychologists, students, uh, and other colleagues in program, but it's not the numbers that matter, it's the quality, and the quality was there, focusing on practice, and especially on practice with marginalized communities. The second initiative, Dismantling Anti-Black Racism. Thank you to chairs, Dr. Marcy Rowland, Dr. Abambola Afalayan, Dr. Jeanette Madkins, and Deja Fitzgerald. This initiative developed two programs offered in our Liberation Lounge this convention that truly allowed much deeper discussions of systemic racism and white supremacy culture and allowed us to engage in conversations that could not occur in workshops. The third group, Engaging Advocacy, chaired by Dr. Andre Consoli, Ryan McDermott, Jennifer Taylor, and Dr. Herman Cadenas as consultant worked to put on an amazing symposium on training and advocacy that was presented here at Virtual APA and will be available on the APA platform 
for three months following. I'm sorry, APA platform for three months and on the SCP website following where we can continue to engage and train our students and colleagues in effective social justice advocacy skills. I would like to thank the leaders of this initiative and all those who have been involved and they're continuing to develop and ask the advocate series and they will they are also working together with materials for our new website in conjunction with the SCP social justice advocacy website team. Our engaging lifelong learning and leadership initiative, I would like to thank Dr. Kimberly Howard, Dr. Bong Ju Huang and Dr. Ruth Fassinger. They, have, they will continue their work under Dr. Uh, Dr. Kimberly Howard's Vice Presidency for Education and Training as they create leadership training modules of which the survey you saw today is part, creating process for a leadership pipeline within SCP and create a social justice focused leadership vision as we work with our consultants. So thank you so much for what you have given us. And fifth, our big ideas in counseling psychology. Thank you to Tri-Chairs, Dr. Sharon Bowman, Dr. Carmen Cruz, and Dr. Marty Cooper. They're presenting three different webinars, with the first having occurred at this convention. The Big Ideas APA webinar was entitled Big Ideas in Counseling Psychology, Uprooting Anti-Blackness. The moderator, if you weren't fortunate enough to be there, was Dr. Clady Davis III with presenters, Dr. Helen Neville, Janet Helms, Dr. Carlton Green, and Della Mosley. This program will be available you know, through the uh, APA website for the next three months, and then will be available on the SCP website. So there are two additional programs coming up in the fall, one on vocational psychology and one on the evolution of mental health systems on university campuses. So, my heart is overwhelmed with appreciation and thanks for the many, many folks who shared their time, talent, and passion, who contribute to the counseling psychology voice within Division 17 and create the sea of change that is so needed in our world today. I'd like to thank the leaders and members of each of the presidential engagement groups for their vision, their commitment, and their amazing success in engaging our members, both quantitatively and qualitatively, in our efforts to strengthen our field and world. I would like to thank my colleagues on our STP cabinet and executive board from whom I have learned so much and whose shared vision is creating a future for SCP that draws the circle even wider. I would like to thank our journal editors and editorial boards, our committee members, our project group leaders, and our students in ECPs in the Leadership Collaborative, the Leadership Development Institute, and the TCP Mentoring Program. I especially would like to thank our Vice President for Communications, Valine Whitaker, and our Communications and Technology Board Chair, Carrie Wilkinshell, for their incredible work moving forward and toward making our new website and membership database a reality, which was no small task. Your vision and contributions strengthen our field and community in ways that will play forward. I'd like to say before we wrap up for the day that you are an incredible group of humans and I am beyond honored to know and work with every single one of you. I couldn't be more fortunate than to be a part of this community during this particular year. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Sad as it is, we have folks transitioning out of their current positions at the end of this meeting, with many of you taking on new roles within SCP and beyond or elsewhere. We so appreciate the countless hours your active and your activism that supports our community. I would first like to recognize Dr. Lisa Ferdinand, our exemplary vice president for professional practice. As a former VP for practice myself, I am awed by Lisa's contributions and I'm excited that she is moving into serving as one of our APA council reps in January. Dr. Dorothy Espelage, our knowledgeable and committed vice president for student affairs. Gloria McGillan, our outgoing SAS co-chair who has been a dedicated leader for three years and put her heart and soul into leadership. Robina Awanga, our second outgoing SAS co-chair who has brought determination and vision along with our other SAS co-chairs in moving our student organization to a new level of inclusion. Dr. Roberto Abreu, 
our outgoing early career psychologist chair, who we are excited to have continue as chair of our member interface board. Our last huge change in SEP leadership is our amazing past president, Annalise Singh, who has led our organization to, through transformative times with transformative vision and a liberation psychology lens. Thank you, Annalise. I did give Annalise a gift. I don't know, Annalise, if, if you have it open, if you want to share. Um, I am opening it right now. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It's a, um, it's a beautiful necklace and a tree. Thank you, Mary and all. This is really wonderful. I have to say that um, it's been a true honor uh, to do what we in my culture call SEBA or service alongside each of you. I think that everyone knows that my one dream for our SCP community is that we place liberation right at the center of all of our hallmark counseling psychology values, bringing those other values like vocation and strength-based and prevention, those words and accountability and justice for the impacts of colonization on our world. And we can write papers about liberation, reteach ourselves about the history of our profession and seek to dismantle white supremacy. Uh, but we all know none of that means anything unless we practice living liberation with one another. So that's truly my one wish for our SCP family that in this generation, we actually find the places down deep within us that need healing. So we can do this healing and repair out in the world and reduce the harm that we engage in because of internalized white and other supremacies. I am so, so excited for where the new leadership will take us next. So thank you, Mary. Thank you, Debbie Nolan. Thank you, AMC. Thank you for everyone I've been able to work with. And Amy, we're so excited about your presidency coming up. Thanks, Annalise. And also, um, we have made a donation to Tulip House in New Orleans um, in, your, in your honor. And if anybody else would like to add to that donation, I don't know, Annalise, if you want to do a couple quick words about Tulip House of Tulip. Oh, wow. Okay, so my eyes are doing that leaking thing. <laughs> I didn't think y'all were going to get me. <laughs> I was doing my deep breathing. <laughs> ah. um, House of Tulip is such an uh, incredible organization. I wish you all could see the work they do in New Orleans every day. It is um, kind of a model of where we need to go, I think, as humans. Uh, they're a group of black and brown, trans, non-binary, white, trans, non-binary co-conspirators and accomplices working together to house uh, trans and non-binary people. They're kind of done with the cis folks at this point and raising money uh, to just do it the way they need to their for their community. They give, they put cash money in the hands of black and brown, trans and non-binary people, recognizing that reparations are gonna take a huge, long, too long time. So this like, wow, <laughs> um, thank you so much. Thank you, Annalise. And the link to House of Tulip is on the slide. We hope that we can, we can add. So there are two last changes. Um, in leadership, we'd like to thank Dr. Linda Forrest and Marcy Rowland, who are completing their terms as co-chairs of our internal and external interface board. Dr. Laurel Watson is rolling off as co-chair of section chairs. And then of course, as we mentioned, Ashley Randall and Brianna French will be rolling off the Council of Representatives at the end of 2021. All of your voices have been invaluable and we continue to be incredibly grateful to each of you. So thank you all. And our next conversation is the status of votes earlier in the meeting. Debbie, will you please announce the results? Sure, I'm actually gonna ask Celeste if she can uh, announce okay. the results. And she's checking in uh, on the back end of the survey. Sure. Yeah, so we received 49 responses. And vote number one was approved, vote number two was approved, and vote number three has been approved. Congratulations. Thank you all very much for dealing with the complexities of the online voting system. 
So next is the time to move forward in a transformative way. Dr. Amy Reynolds brings an unprecedented experience and passion to her new role as SDP president, and I know you will be fabulous. Your vision for the future is perfect at this point in history, and you are ideal to move SCP forward in amazing ways. Amy, are you ready to take the oath of office? I am. Okay, raise your right hand. We're not on this. We're not on a stage at a ballroom, but I do have the um, the joke gavel that I am passing along to you. I will mail it. Um, having to do um, having to do with both the fun and the seriousness of this role. So if you could repeat after me, I Amy Reynolds. I Amy Reynolds. Affirm that I will faithfully discharge. Affirm that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of president of the Society of Counseling Psychology. The duties of president of the Society of Counseling Psychology. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Uphold the bylaws of the division. Uphold the bylaws of the, the division. And those of the American Psychological Association and those of the American Psychological Association. Congratulations, Dr. Reynolds. Thank you. I have to explain, I only have my arm up part way because I had shoulder surgery earlier oh. this summer, <laughs> so I cannot lift it up any higher, so. It counts. It still counts, good. <laughs> Absolutely. I wanna ask everyone Oops. to please join me in appreciation a uh, deep appreciation for everything that Dr. Mary O'Leary Wiley has done this past year during such a challenging year for all her amazing leadership. I know everybody was in the chat during her summary, um, but let's one more time give her some love and let her know how much we appreciate her. Thank you, Mary, for everything. Thank you so much, Amy. And I look forward to serving on cabinet for another year with you. Absolutely. So, hello everyone. It's with humility and deep gratitude that I continue my leadership journey in the Society of Counseling Psychology, which has always been my professional home. I'm proud to continue the most recent leadership tradition of Annalise Singh, who inspired and challenged all of us with the vision of liberation as both a value and a practice. And of course, Mary O'Leary Wiley, who reminded us about the importance of engagement and connection. And I so look forward to working closely with uh, the brilliant leadership of President-elect Siobhan moore Lebon. Uh, I think together we're gonna continue on the path that Annalise and so many of the leaders, many of whom are on this call, um, have, have led the way. The focus of my presidency is on transformation. And my theme is transforming counseling psychology through critical consciousness and radical change. My goal is to help us transform what we do and how we do it. The goal is to create an inclusive and liberatory CP. There cannot be inclusion without change and liberation cannot exist without critical consciousness and radical change in action. In reality, the purpose of inclusion is not to invite others in to adopt or adapt to our norms and views of counseling psychology, but rather we need to now more than ever deconstruct the core of what we do, our assumptions, our public norms, our hidden culture, and transform with true engagement, inclusion, liberation, and radical change to rebuild our profession and yes, our association. Such efforts require that we transform everything from our identities to our perspectives and our practices. Before I share my presidential initiatives with you, it's so important for me to situation, situate myself and my positionality in the work I hope to do in community with all of you. I am a white cisgender woman, a lesbian, an able-bodied human, raised middle-class and Catholic, and also a late career counseling psychologist. I've also been partnered with Rochelle, who is a black woman whom I have loved for almost 33 years, uh, COVID married by the way. And together we have raised two amazing children, Justice and Mandela, who are everything to me and us. All of these identities, relationships and experiences and so many more shape who I am and how I view the world. 
Like most white people, I was late to understanding myself as a racial being. But for the past 40 years, I have worked tirelessly to catch up and actively engage in unlearning and relearning all that was taught to me about the world. It's important, I think, for me to acknowledge my positionality because it will shape my presidency just as it has shaped my life. In graduate school, or since graduate school, which was quite a long time ago, I have strived to center much of my learning in the writings and wisdom of people of color and other transformative leaders. On the slide here, you can see some of just a few of them that either in the past or in more current times have profoundly impacted me. Their words guide me almost every day, and I want to share a few that are core to me so that you better understand my perspective. For those of you who don't know Octavia Butler, she is a gift to the world. This quote, all that you touch, you change. All that you change, changes you. The only lasting truth is change. God or the life force is change. I think that's so important because so often when we're talking about transformation and change, we view it as a linear process. It's anything but that. It is multifaceted, it is chaotic, it is everything. And so it's important for us to take her words with us. Of course, there's always James Baldwin. Not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. I'm reminded of uh, Dr. Dr. Nikki's talk earlier today when she said, one of the truths we have to change is the white supremacy that lives in counseling psychology and SCP. Next, it's Audre Lorde, who I love so much that we gave our daughter her name as her middle name. Audre Lorde said, revolution is not a one-time event. That's important for us because every day we have to wake up, each and every one of us, especially those of us with privileged identities, to try to disrupt and change the system as it is. And finally, this is probably the longest quote that has been traveling with me. Um, I've had it since I was in graduate school. It's, an laminate, it's a laminated piece of paper that's gone to every bulletin board in every office I've ever had. Every aspect of our lives is in a sense, a vote for the kind of world and planet we want to live in. Francis Moore Lape, who uh, wrote Died for a Small Planet in the 70s was way ahead of her time, um, talking about saving the earth and uh, talking about everything that we do in our lives. Uh, from how we spend our money to how we spend our time, uh, to the books we read, to the relationships that we have and the communities we live in. It all says what matters to us. It's a lot to live up to, but something I strive to do every day. I think these voices and so many others offer us a transformational lens that we can use to create change in the Society of Counseling Psychology. And I'm so excited to have this amazing community who is committed uh, to working on this change with all of us in the leadership. So with that, I have several initiatives and a few sticks that I want to announce and share with you. Um, the first one is Transform Counseling Psychology Curriculum and Praxis. Um, early on when I was thinking about whether to run, I knew this was gonna be at the top of my agenda because long before I was a faculty member, I worked in college counseling centers and I was, Training was my, was my gig, was my, was my jam. And, and so this was always gonna be part of what I did. If we really believe in multiculturalism and social justice and liberation in our training, if we had committed to that, we need to approach our curriculum changes in a way that's not additive, that incorporates critical consciousness, theories of planned change that will really allow us to critique, dismantle, to, to transform how and what we teach. It's not enough to have an aspirational goal of an inclusive and justice oriented curriculum. We need resources, frameworks, and a plan to make it happen. Unfortunately, there isn't any one of us who gets paid to do this extra work to make this happen. It's blood and treasure that we give. And often people, even those who are committed, don't have the time or the resources to do it. So this initiative is focused on creating various work groups where counseling psychology faculty, internship and postdoctoral training staff and doctoral students can come together to critically examine and deconstruct how various competencies, courses, internship, postdoc seminars and content are taught and then reimagine, dream and reconstruct new and transformative ways to teach and train. I've identified 12 possible specific competencies, core courses or unique counseling psych strengths 
um, for, for these work groups. I'm certainly open to more if other people reach out and say that they would like to do so. So first off is professionalism. How do we define professionalism? How it's used is gatekeeping. And then core competencies as recognized by APA, ethics, research, interventions, assessment, counseling theory, supervision, uh, multicultural counseling, and then some um, SCP strengths, career vocational, introduction to counseling psych or pro-sem courses. Um, and then two that are not related to core competencies, but I feel have done a lot of harm, and that's history and systems and psychopathology. We need to transform the way we teach those two classes, um, and, and, and we need to do it now. So that's the first initiative that I hope to work on with many of you this year. The second one is transforming who we are. Um, primarily right now, what I'm, I'm envisioning this is a group that I've already started, Centering Indigenous People and Perspectives in Counseling Psychology, which is a group of Indigenous counseling psychologists working together to dream and build a counseling psychology that includes and celebrates Indigenous people and perspectives. SCP is always identified as being a value-driven association committed to multiculturalism and social justice. Yet we haven't always lived or enacted true inclusion in our profession. Recently, there have been calls to decolonize SCP programs and curriculum. However, I'm not sure we're quite there yet. From my perspective, we must first center, focus on centering indigenous people and perspectives in counseling site, because unless we do so, we cannot begin the process of decolonizing what we do. In the words of Lolly McCubbin, my friend and colleague and others, it's time that we stop using decolonizing as a metaphor unless we center indigenous people and perspectives and attend to issues of uh, land repatriation and other related topics, right? So this group, I think, and, and maybe more will come out of this, but you know, I think what we need to do in the words of Annalise Singh is to build a nexus of BIPOC leaders. That means a critical mass, right? So going beyond this pipeline idea where it's sort of single file, get in line and maybe go out the back door, right? We need a nexus of people. And this is one group that's been under attended to, underserved. Um, and so partially we wanna provide support and nourishment for indigenous counseling psychologists who are already working in the field and may not even be connected to SCP. Through this group, we hopefully will identify what is needed by current indigenous counseling psychologists and graduate students, and then work to meet those needs, live up to our promise, live up to our ideals. The third and final initiatives, initiative is transforming SCP policy structures and practices. Much of this work I think will happen in conjunction and collaboration with our consultants who many of you um, listen to this afternoon through the lens of uprooting anti-Black racism to assess, interrogate, and transform our policy structures and practices. We've started doing this in the last couple of years. For example, everything from rethinking how we do awards. Um, what are our assumptions that underlie the awards that we give? What are the criteria that we use? Um, and really trying to reconfigure how it is that we do that. Another area where this transformation will occur is an ongoing group that was started by Annalise um, called Counseling Psychology and Everyday Reparations Work Group. And this group has been working for the past year on increasing awareness how to engage in everyday acts of reparation. And soon we will be launching a survey of Black counseling psychologists and graduate students to assess the level of harm that they have and continue to experience within counseling psychology and within the Society for Counseling Psychology. And we'll be working closely with our consultants in this area. Sort of related to that topic, I wanna to give a quick shout out to the program that Mary's mentioned several times today, the Big Ideas Program, a program with doctors um, Helen Neville, Janet Helms, Carlton Green, and Del Mosley. They talked about the importance of reparations within our field, of abolishing the GREs, of acknowledging Black humanity and being accountable for white violence, and the need to get out uh, the trap and transform psychology by challenging our denial, gathering history, and getting real about counseling psychology and Black wellness. Additionally, there's two sticks that will be formed this year to further enhance our society. Our sections are our entry point for many people into the division. Um, and we want to transform and strengthen the sections, not only for themselves and their members, but also in their collaboration and connection with SCP structure. So we're going to be working with the co-chairs 
uh, of section chairs to create a committee that will be working on this and, and bringing some of this transformational energy uh, to the sections. And then of course, it seems like every year I've been involved in leadership, we master's issues are on the table. And that's because uh, counseling psychology within APA and within psychology really is a leader in addressing master's issues, particularly the issues of master students, master graduates, and faculty who teach a master's programs. So it's really important to continue, especially as APA is on its own journey with uh, master's students, for us to continue to put our voice and our leadership out there. We will continue under the support and leadership of Kim Howard in, in all that she's already doing in the education area to work in, in this. So that's a lot. Um, I could not be more humbled as I begin this journey. I look forward to working with each of you to transfer counseling psychology and SCP together. I'll close uh, with an indigenous proverb, which I must say it's noted as such because of colonization, but it's one that caught my eyes, my eye. Uh, we can't change the direction of the wind, but we can adjust the sails. So thank you for listening to me. I look forward to the year ahead. And with that, I motion to adjourn the 2021 annual business meeting of the Society of Counseling Psychology. Thank you very much. Now we're gonna take a slight break. Um, we have SCP mini socials, which we hope many of you will stick around for where we have paired senior counseling psychologists and, and uh, early career counseling psychologists who will be doing breakout rooms and just hanging out since we can't be together in person. I'm so looking forward to meeting with all of you and check, hopefully the link will be put in the chat so that you can uh, take it with you and uh, we will be back in about 10 minutes. So thank you everybody. Thank for all the love in the chat and uh, thanks for a great day. <laughs>